So that's Usher on stage at the Park MGM in Las Vegas, where he's doing his sellout residency this year. And that sax player up the back is Mike Burton. Now, whether you're an Usher fan or not, you've got to agree that's got to be one of the coolest gigs you can do in the world right now. Now, you're probably wondering, like I am at this point, how would you even go about getting such an awesome gig like that? Well, lucky for you, I actually asked Mike to come and do a special masterclass for our Sax School Pro members recently. <laughs> And in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing some clips from that session that I think will help both of us to understand Mike's journey from getting started on saxophone all the way through to doing this incredible gig. The band is seven piece band. We got a three piece horn section, a full rhythm section, drums, bass, keys, guitar, and then there's like I don't know, dozens of dancers, uh, skaters, I mean, all kinds of lights and pyrotechnics and all kind of crazy stuff going on, man. It's, it's just a really fun show. Now, of course, Mike is an incredible saxophone player, but to really understand his journey, we need to understand how he thinks about saxophone, about improvising and about learning. And to do that, we need to go back a little bit first. So, well, I was born and raised in Jackson, Mississippi. My mom is a singer, she still sings. She's an original member of the Mississippi Mass Choir, which is like a world famous choir. Um, and when I was a kid, they had like the number one album in the country for like a year straight, you know? So it's like, I was like 10 or 11 years old. So I was going to rehearsals with her, uh, traveling with the choir, you know, on the bus, going to different cities with them, just really seeing this and being, being a part of it as a, as a kid, man. So it was just a major impact on me. Uh. Excuse me, Brother Frank. We love gospel music. Yeah, we sure do. Y'all love gospel music? Yeah. Yes, okay. And we love the Mississippi Mass Choir. All fancy. right. Yeah. But how come the Mississippi Mass Choir doesn't rap? Yeah, just why? Why? <laughs> When I got to high school, my parents insisted that I, I go to this performing arts high school, which I, I was resisting the whole way. But um, when I got there, it was, it was the best thing for me. Um, you know, I started learning about jazz theory and history and checking out, you know, Charlie Parker and learning these great jazz musicians. So I was taking that stuff and at the same time still going to church every Sunday. And I started to play like for the offering or the sermonic hymn. <laughs> So you can see that gospel was a massive part of Mike's background. And in fact, that was actually the reason why I wanted him to come and do this masterclass for us at Sax School Pro anyway. So something the tutors and I are often asked inside Sax School Pro is for help learning how to start playing gospel saxophone or to prepare for doing that kind of playing. So we've actually been working on a gospel saxophone challenge with our members. And this masterclass from Mike was perfect because Mike really shares some secret tactics that he uses to unlock that style in his saxophone playing. What I really want to know though, was how all that background helped Mike to go and play in lots of other styles as a pro player. I definitely thought, think it gave me my own sound uh, and that, especially in school, uh, e even now, but, um, but you know, the whole church thing, man, it's, it's different because it's, it's like you're, it's like ear training. It's like on the job training. It's like, you're not really, you're not, I wasn't reading music when I was playing at church. It's just like, you know, it's like, you have to react. If the pastor does something, you have to, Re react to that if the, the organ player plays something if, if somebody's singing you you, you want to accompany accompany them but not get in the way don't step on the their lyrics you know and when they when it's time for me to play the the solo or play the the hymn i have to really play the melody i can't just be all over the place bopping all around i have to establish the melody so the people in the congregation can recognize the melody and can relate to what i'm playing and they can feel what i'm playing and it's trying to convey a message, you know, but you really want to try to relate to your audience as opposed to just, I'm going to show all of my cool licks I've got as opposed to really playing that melody, you know, because that's most yeah. important. Do you right. think you were doing that as sort of a, you know, by modeling what the singers were doing? Most definitely. I was going to say that just as how, you know, we as saxophonists might listen to the greats and try to transcribe their solos and take little passages that we like and write that down and put it into our own playing. Uh, I wrote down a few of my favorites. I mean, a guy named Frank Williams. He was like, he's the founder of the Mississippi Mass Choir. Uh, Reverend James Moore. Uh, Kim Burrell is another one. To me, she's probably the most influential vocalist in R&B soul gospel music in the last 30 years. Uh, I mean, so 
folks like that definitely outside of listening to the great saxophoners of, you know, my heroes, Charlie Parker, Dexter Gordon, all those guys, I was listening to these gospel singers, soul singers, um, and really putting that, you know, um, into my playing. Wow, so just in case you missed it, there were two amazing pieces of advice from Mike right there. First of all is melody. Focus on melody instead of all the fancy intricate techniques with the improvising. It's melody that will connect you with your audience and also understanding how melody fits in the style that you're playing is super important. And the second thing is to listen to singers. Take inspiration from the singers that you love in the style you're trying to learn. Because if you can model what the singers are doing in that specific style and get it onto your saxophone, you're really going to connect musically with that style. There's so much you can learn from singers. Okay, so now we understand a bit more about Mike's playing and the way he thinks about saxophone. How about his career? What did he do to engineer that situation where he ended up doing the Usher gig that we spoke about at the start. I mean, my first tour out of college was with the Universal Solo Circus. So my first gig out of school, I got a, a, a job touring with the circus for two years. And, wow, um, how was that? It, it was interesting. It was, I mean, the cool thing about it, I was, you know, a young guy, like 23 years old, and I was getting to see the country. We were on the road for like 10 months out of the year, man. So we, we set up shop in New York City for six weeks, be in LA for a month, you know? So being a young guy, being in a city for that long and going to jam sessions, that was great. But that's what got me to Atlanta, Georgia, because the tour was based out of Atlanta. And okay. so I, I moved to Atlanta. And when I got here, I just hit the jam sessions and our networking and that kind of stuff. You know, I did run away with the circus. I, just, I definitely did. Um, so, yeah. So but being here and just meeting all the guys at the jam sessions and my, my first tour was with a, a new edition. I had put out a, a project. The guy that mixed, mixed and mastered my project was the drummer for new edition. And so they were looking for a saxophone player slash keyboard player. And he threw my name in the hat because he knew I played keys from mixing my record. And that's kind of, that's kind of the start of my journey. And from there, I got on with PJ Morton and then Tyler Perry. And that was from a jam session in Atlanta. I did that for 10 really? years, doing all his stage plays and movies and stuff. And um, just meeting other guys, but really just networking, man. I mean, I, I've toured with Jill Scott for a long time, toured with Mary J, Anita Baker, uh, Patty LaBelle for the past 10 years. And like I said, just now starting up with Usher, man. So, but it's all relationships, man. You know, just trying to be a man of my word, be on time, know my music when I get there, be yeah. a good character. And uh, hopefully folks like my plan too, so. Oh man, I love that. Such great advice. And there's so many amazing points in there that we can unpack. So let's do a quick recap of the top seven things that Mike mentioned in this session today. Number one, get good musical foundations, whether you learn online from SAC school or in your community or even in your family, make sure you get some great education. Number two, focus on the melody and be aware of how you connect with your audience. Number three, learn from singers in your style. There's so much that you can learn from great singers. Absorb that into your saxophone style, it'll make you a much better player. Number four, take playing opportunities whenever they arise and use those to meet new people. Number five, be active at jam sessions and use these to meet people. Number six, be ready and be on top of your skills. So whenever the opportunity comes along, and it will, you'll be ready to rock it. And number seven, it's all about relationships. So be on time, be professional, be easy to get along with. Those seven things are so important and I can tell you it's been exactly the same for me in my career. You never know when you're going to have that one random conversation at some strange gig that leads to an incredible performing opportunity. If you show up, if you do your homework, be prepared and put yourself in the right position, then good things are going to happen. Hey, I really hope that you found this useful today. And if you need some guidance along your journey with your saxophone career, then come and see what we're doing at Sax School Pro because you'll be able to see, in fact, you'll be able to see the entire masterclass that we did with Mike Burton because there's so much great stuff in there. He really digs into his process for the way that he transcribes a singer's style onto his saxophone. He demonstrates, he breaks it down. It really is amazing to see, and I know it, it absolutely helped our members. So if you want to check out Sax School Pro, there's a 14-day trial running as I'm filming this. I'll put a link down below if you're ready to get started. But most importantly, I really hope you found this useful, and it's got your brain firing with some ideas of how you can get your career going. So let me know in a comment if you found this useful. I'll catch you next time. Wow, I bet that's a whole lot of fun. And are you guys on stage for the whole show then? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, the the band's kind of in the back. We have we have a, a few segments where we come out, come out front with him. We, we take some solo solos and stretch out a little bit and 
certain parts of the show. But uh, yeah, man, it's wow, that's amazing. What a great experience. I wish I was in Vegas. I'd love to go and see that. That'd be fantastic. You gotta, you gotta come out, man. We're there. I gotta come out. October 29th. Come on. All right, I'll just pop over. Sounds great. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, good time tonight.